I had a, a, a woman I worked with on the phone this week um, who, who has trauma and has panic attacks and was approaching a deadline at work feeling of not going to be able to make it, a feeling of rising panic. Um, she had just been to a meditation class where her teacher had said, when it arises, lean into the fear, be with it, open to it. And um, I invited her to sense how she was relating to the fear, and it was like, no, this is not a good thing for me to be with. So I, so I did exactly what we're talking about. This too means, okay, honor that. That's thank you very much, yes to the no. And she said, and she agreed with herself to turn her attention elsewhere, to listen to music, and to plan the week, and to do some other things. And she described how when she did that, she found herself getting, after she had listened to some music and planned for the week, she found herself getting quiet, and then she began to pay attention, and she had a lot more space, and she was able to bring a lot of compassion to that place that had been so panicky. she was able to respond, not react. Now, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you don't even come around to be being with the panicky place, but still you've created a new neuropathy because you've said yes to an experience, which is what, where the power is. Okay, to repeat, we pre-select where we're going to be paying attention, where we have the, all the signposts of a big no. When it comes up, recognize, pause, breathe some, maybe ground. Then begin to sense what's there, yes to this, and yes to this, and this too to this. I think of the deepening then is to, this is really, if there's one takeaway from tonight, this is what I hope you'll take away, is to actively, audibly, it may be mentally whispering or actively whispering where it's really tough the center of where it's really tough, saying yes to that, or I give this permission to be here, permission to be here, permission to be here, from your sincerity. Now again, it may be that there's trauma and you can't, but if you can, that's the next step of deepening allowing. Just like when you're feeling love for someone, if you look at them and you say, I love you, you actively say, I love you, the love comes more alive, when you say giving permission, or yes, or this too, and you're really, really saying it from your full intentionality, the space becomes more open. It's very powerful. Example, for me this, this last few weeks, I'm training in uh, my dog Katie, which is letter K, D, cute dog, you know, and, and she's, she's a, uh, um, She's got a lot of border collie and other stuff in her that makes her really, really active, really hard to train. I, her, her name's Katie, but we joke that she's KDD, you know. She's really all over the place, you know. And so, you know, and I've, I've been to a trainer and I've learned how to, I've got the basics and she's doing much, much better. Thank you, Katie. I just want to honor her in case she's listening. <laughs> but. Um, but she still, when she gets excited, will we'll pull some. And my joints are such that I get hurt with pulling. So it, it's, you know, I really get injured. So when she starts getting really excited and distracted, I get really angry. And my voice, I'm no longer using the commands and, you know, so on in a way that I've been trained. I'm angry. And my, my pitch raises and I, my, I lose my cadence. And sometimes I tug at the leash in a way that I feel violent. It's like I'm doing it from anger, and it's really awful to me. And so that became the place that I said, okay, you know, it's tripping me over my tolerance thing. You know, I get into the very self-protective and then anger reaction. Now this is an example that most of us have with, ch with, our, with child rearing and with a million other things. So um, it felt important to... Uh, to name it, to look for it. And then the last bunch of mornings when I've gone out, I have, I've had this thing where I start feeling, when I sense it rising, I will pause, I'll breathe, uh, give her permission to be as she is. Doesn't mean I like it, it doesn't mean I don't have a plan for her to be different, just telling you. <laughs> but in that moment, 
this is how it's okay. you are just as you are permission because it wasn't help me to be blaming her okay it doesn't help me <laughs> then I give myself permission to feel the anger to feel the frustration to feel that kind of helplessness the fear of my body getting hurt I just do the for I just kind of forgive and give permission okay and something opens up and then I'm able to resume and do the training in a more intelligent way. In other words, I'm able to respond to the situation and not keep reacting and tugging and raising my voice. It's an example for you and the challenge, and I want to go into another hard place, is when it's another person, they're doing something that ends up we have an experience that's really, really bad and something in us goes, but it is their fault. It really is their fault and they should be different. And it feels that way and it feels that way really strongly. And I suspect every single one of us knows that experience. I mean, it's one thing when it's a dog, you know, Katie, cute dog, doing her thing and it's easy to kind of see through and get this is a conditioned creature. She's just doing what her breed does. It's another thing when it's, you know, a partner and especially in intimate relationships where there's so much more attachment and fear, it's, it's uh, really quite difficult to get out of the thing of it's your fault. Somebody sent me this. George exclaimed to his friend, I had just had another bad argument with my wife. Oh yeah, the friend said, and how did this one end? When it was over, he replied, she came crawling to me on her hands and knees. Friend looked puzzled. Really? Now that's a change. What did she say? I think she said something like, come out from under the bed, you gutless weasel. <laughs> I know I'm being a bit, that's a bit silly, but there's this inquiry if we really say, well, who do we feel most intimate with? I mean, who do we really feel most intimate with? And we feel most intimate with those who accept us just as we are, who give us permission to be as we are. It's always the way. And yet for most of us, as we know, um, it's conditional. And to the extent that the conditions are pretty broad and we can talk about the conditions, we're okay, but there's these, uh, these usually these, you know, sometimes unsaid conditions on what makes you okay and me okay in our relational dance. Another illustration is Jack waking up with a horrible hangover and a throbbing black eye. The first thing he sees is Rose on the side table and a loving note from his wife. Okay, dear Jack, the breakfast is made. I've gone shopping to make you your favorite dinner tonight. I love you. Okay. He stumbles into the kitchen. Sure enough, there's breakfast. Johnny says to his son, what happened last night? Well, you came home totally soosed and got that black eye by tripping over a chair. So, why the rose, the breakfast, the sweet note from your mom? Oh, that mom dragged you into the bedroom when, when she tried to take off your clothes, you screamed, leave me alone, I'm married. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> to the guys that are listening, forgive me because I get this a little targeted here on men, but it's both ways. <laughs> so, the understanding, and this is, this is the most challenging piece when we're convinced somebody else is wrong. The understanding that can save us is that by f any moment we're focusing our attention on you're wrong, you should be different, in those moments we are not able to access our own power and our own resourcefulness. It's disempowering. Anger and blaming is a false power. It f it's addictive because it feels good temporarily. Every one of us knows it. I mean, when that swelling, burning, hot feeling, there's nothing like just letting it out. You feel power temporarily. Deep empowerment, deep access to your wisdom, to who you are, not possible if the pattern is to blame the other person. You just can't get there. 
And something in us gets that. We really do. As much as we think that other person should change, we get it that we're not coming from our wholeness. We're not coming from our strength. We get it. So that's one piece. The other piece is that in any moment that we're evaluating the other person as you should be different, it's your fault, you're bad, we're arguing with reality. We're not recognizing the 10,000 currents that, of causes that create this moment. And the, every one of us is the way we are for a reason. You know, I, I use the, the metaphor often of uh, the, the dog that the guy sees in the woods and, you know, he goes to pet and the dog springs up and growls and bears its fangs and, and he, you know, goes from wanting to pet the dog to being really angry and, you know, what an awful creature. And then he sees the dog has its leg in a trap. Okay, and then he goes from that, you're bad, to, oh, you poor thing. If we could see the patterning, if we could see the experiences that set in place another person's, what we think of as badness. People don't want to be bad. They don't want to act in, in ways that are, are um, hurtful deep down, but then they do when they get hurt enough because that's the only way they find relief. Everybody's got their leg in a trap if they're causing suffering. It's said in, you know, you didn't, if, you, if you're struggling with an addiction to food or if you're struggling with your own anger or your insecurity with other people, it's not your fault. It, it, genetics, early history, that doesn't mean you can't find a way to wake up from it. It just means that up until this moment, the causes and conditions of things you never chose are acting. It's the same with others. So we can't control others. We're in a mutual in, in inter-influencing dance and the only place we have any power, the only place, is in the moment we withdraw our blame and give permission. You, you got permission to be as you are in this moment. And offer that permission to ourselves and then begin this process I've been describing of saying yes to our own experience, yes to the anger, yes to the fear, yes to the rage, really offering it inward. The woman I described uh, in that relationship where her partner just, he, she said, he doesn't make me feel special, he doesn't give me time, he's distracted when I talk. And so she was doing a lot of blaming, but she read, she read Radical Acceptance and she really wanted to free herself. And we were working together at a retreat when we actually dropped it deeper. And she asked her for a classic example of when she went over that toleration level and got reactive. And it was that they had agreed about a week ago to take the evening off together and they were going to go out to dinner and then they were going to come back and watch an episode of Mad Men or something. And so um, he came home late, too late for them to go out for dinner. They have dinner at home. Then a friend from college, an old college buddy calls and he, he doesn't stay on that long, maybe 20 minutes, but she had just hit, she hit it. She took a bed and uh, she went to bed to go book to bed when he came to bed she couldn't say why she was so angry she had too much of a knot she certainly couldn't be affectionate carried into the next day that she was just completely armored couldn't say anything so that's where we worked and you know I said okay go to the point that you went over the edge and it was at some point during that phone call where she just exploded and that's where I had her pause breathe say, okay, permission to you to be exactly as you are, permission to me. And then she started experiencing just where she was, you know, yes, to the place in her, to the fear, to the hurt, to the anger, to the deep, deep sense of I'm unlovable, you know. She went, it went very deep. She even had an image of herself as a three-year-old kind of chasing around her mother and her mother, you know, mommy, 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 and her mother turning and giving her a furious look and all of a sudden, that feeling. So it was deep work from that yes. And what her practice became with him 
and we kept an email touch, was that uh, whenever she'd hit that place where she felt like she wasn't, um, that, she, that she just didn't matter, uh, permission to him, permission to self, she'd hug herself, she'd hold herself, she'd be actually be holding the three-year-old. And eventually she could deepen her attention and see him and see where his leg was in a trap, that he was this guy, kind of guy that never could be enough and was always extending himself to everybody and always felt like he was guilty and falling short. And, um, but she had enough of her own empowerment to be able to start the conversation, not from a place of you're bad, but here's what's going on so they could respond to each other. And they were started a kind of dialogue that uh, really allowed for a shift. So this wasn't passivity by saying, you have permission. It got her to a place that she could respond to their stuck place rather than react. And it all came because in some way she said, okay, you really have permission to be as you are. I mean, she really said that. This is Rumi. Very little grows on jagged rock. Be ground. Be crumbled. So wildflowers will come up where you are. You've been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. So we begin tonight to look at one piece of this process of healing and freedom, what we call saying yes or giving permission. And we know that we can't do it right away many times. It's, there's a very gradual process. And if there's trauma, often with the support of others to make the space. We also know that it's not the end of the story, that we can open and surrender and say yes and accept this moment what's going on and we need to really deepen our attention and sense what's needed so we can actively engage and respond. So it's not the end of the story. And there are times when you can feel like it's impossible. And I always know that when I... Uh, I'm giving, putting together a talk that something usually comes up that reminds me of the deep challenge and the deep potential in this path. And, and I want to share with you as a part of my closing tonight uh, what came up this week, which was today. And I, I got an email from a very dear person to me, uh, African-American man who uh, wonderful guy and he had been uh, he had been traveling some and he got into a situation that he wrote about whereby he was in a kind of white area and a uh, maybe group of about eight young men in their 30s with uh, some with swastikas, you know, shaved heads, all the paraphernalia kind of surrounded him and started, uh, he got, was being taunted and harassed and threatened and traumatized. He thought that uh, he was going to be attacked. Somebody else had been killed, you know, the month earlier that he'd heard about uh, by some of these gangs. And, um, and it, just because somebody else walked in, I mean, walked into the store they were in and uh, kind of broke it up and got him out of there, it didn't happen that he was uh, physically harmed. But the scar and the pain of uh, having that happen to him, uh, li reading about that, um, I said, okay, so how on earth do we say to somebody who's taunting us and abusing us, okay, permission to be as you are? How do I say that reading that email? You know, how do we read the newspapers and sense the cycle that's going on in the world whereby 
you know, a, we're aggressive, and then there's the destruction of 9-11, and then there's more aggression, and then there's more aggression back, and then there's the defilement of a, another, uh, you know, group's religion, and then there's an assassination, and we keep, every group keeps blaming and having vengeance. How do we say at any point, oh, okay, you know, yes, you are as you are. How do we say that, really? It's really hard. So that was what I was stuck with today. Like, how could I say, you know, permission? And I did. I said to myself, okay, let's see what happens. Permission that this really happens. Permission that there's this kind of ignorance and cruelty and hatred. And then what that made happen, as soon as I gave permission for these neo-Nazi gangs just to be, then all of a sudden I had to open very fully to the pain and woundedness of my friend. And that broke me up. And I wouldn't have been able to feel how much I cared and loved him if I had continued to oppose the fact of these neo-Nazi guys. I would, have, I would have had a more abstract compassion, but it broke me up. As soon as I said, okay, permission, this is the reality, it's here, it's in all of us, but in these particular wounded guys, it's more, okay, accept. And then to accept the pain that a dear one goes through, and yet something in me knows that I can respond more from a wholeness by having said permission, yeah, permission, than if I had held that rigidity of, oh, that is, they are bad. Does that make sense? So I want to invite you to explore for yourself the power of giving permission, of saying yes. In these last few moments, we'll just, we don't have much time, so I'll just give you a brief taste. come into stillness, to sense if there's anywhere that you want to bring your attention to, anything going on in your life that, that brings you to a real reactivity, whatever brings up no, brings up that sense of this is bad, I'm bad, you're bad, this life is intolerable this way that brings up anger or fear. So just sensing your intention when this arises the next time to pause. And it may be that you're with other people and it's not possible, but you can practice on the sidelines by right now sensing the reaction, sensing all that goes into the reaction. You must feel threatened, violated, offended. facing possible failure of some form. What happens if this starts rising up and you pause? You say, okay, this is a pause. And just breathe. Take a few full breaths even right now, just to sense the space that's possible. And if this involves another person, you might explore just saying the words, 
giving you permission to be as you are or just yes you're letting be you're acknowledging the reality of you are as you are you're withdrawing your blame you're not opposing you might sense that your place of power is by attending inwardly and giving permission to whatever you're feeling and you might sense just with curiosity what language works for you is it just the word yes sometimes yes if it's said with real love immediately dissolves an open space sometimes just giving permission to what feels like shouldn't be there or saying forgiven, forgiven does it just explore the language the effect is that in a cellular way you're letting be whatever's coming up in you this too and this too just whatever right now might be most predominant and maybe you're not able to track anything in particular just whatever you're feeling right now then it's fine whatever experience in this moment is most predominant discover what happens when you deepen the yes as far as you can so that your whole body, the cells, the spaces between the cells yield and open to what is right here and now what is the sense of your own being when you're truly allowing this life to be just as it is? close with a few words a poem by teacher Dana Faltz it's called White Dove in the shared quiet an invitation arises like a white dove lifting from a limb and taking flight come and live in truth take your place in the flow of grace draw aside the veil you thought would always separate your heart from love all you ever longed for is before you in this moment if you dare draw in a breath and whisper yes Namaste